So I did a community tab saying that I was gonna do a discussion on YouTube, being a YouTuber, all the different elements, I'll put it here, and uh, asking people if there was anything that they wanted to know about. If you had any stuff that you wanted me to d discuss specifically. I know a lot of people don't care for the behind the curtain kind of content, it's cool, no problem, but y'all asked some really good questions. So I'm excited to sit down and chat, maybe just, I don't know, get to know each other a little bit better. Do you ever feel stressed about how passionate communities will respond to your takes on their favorite pieces of literature? Thank you, Clayton, for your kind words in the second half of that comment. That was really, really sweet. Um, and the answer to your question is, yeah, yeah, definitely. I think for me, the most stressful part is when I don't love a much loved series, or even if I liked it, but it wasn't like a new favorite. And sometimes fandoms can be so passionate and I just don't thrive on like being the spicy take and and being the 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 one that hates on everybody's favorite like that's not it's it's not where i thrive so that is really stressful for me but even even stuff like a series that i love and i have a video where i basically just rave about everything about it and then i say there's one thing i didn't really like and i talk about that and you know a lot of times the feedback is great and we have awesome discussions, but a lot of times people will fixate on that one negative and like really hone in on it and get really intense about it because we're readers, we get really connected with what we love, we get intense. And being the, the person that all the intensity is directed towards, yeah, it gets overwhelming. It, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it does, it does get overwhelming. But for the most part, the majority of the intensity that comes at me is not negative intensity. The majority of the intensity, is, because I'm a very passionate person, <laughs> because I'm a very expressive and just like what I feel is, ha is there it is. Um, because of that, people kind of match my energy a lot. So if I love something really hard, I get comments of people that love something really hard and that's fun intensity for me. And, and fans that are just like, please read my favorite series and fans that are so excited that I love something too, that kind of intensity intensity, I love because I'm here for that. You know, like I'm, I made a channel because I wanted to talk about books and I continue to make videos because I like the conversations. I like it not, I like reading my favorite thing in the world to not be a solo activity. And so when people meet me with the same level of intense enthusiasm and excitement that I have, it's like, ah, my people. <laughs> so if it's positive intensity, I thrive on it. I don't get overwhelmed by intense fandoms unless it's like not the fun kind of intensity that does get overwhelming. As a fellow booktuber, do you ever feel the pressure to make videos that are viral material? I've always loved your content because it doesn't really follow the social norms of what others are doing in the book community. Thank you, Maddie. Um, do I feel pressure to do, to make videos that are viral material? Not really. Uh, when booktube or when I'm new to the manga community, but when the communities that I'm a part of are really, really into something, if it's something that I, that looks fun to me, you know, like if there's a video that everybody's doing that looks fun, then yeah, of course I want to do it too. And, and I love that because I love the community aspect of being in a community. So that's super fun. But if it's something that I'm not interested in, I feel no pressure to do it. Um, a good example of that is Book Talk. Okay, so Book Talk is when Book Talk first, or when TikTok first kind of exploded and Book Talk was getting really super popular, a lot of YouTubers were doing Book Talk, book talk like reaction, reacting to Book Talk videos or uh, reading Book Talk's most recommended things. And I watched those videos. I, I enjoyed them, I enjoyed being a viewer of them, but I don't have any interest in TikTok, so it wouldn't make sense for me to make those videos. Um, a better example for right now, <laughs> Rings of Power and um, House of Dragon. Everybody's talking about those two shows. They are based off of books, loosely. Rings of Power is not really an adaptation. It's more of like a interpretation, exploration, inspired by the Silmarillion, doesn't matter. The point is, it's on topic 
for the communities that I'm a part of. It's on topic for booktube, and it would make sense for me to make videos about them too, and that's what everybody's talking about, that's what everybody's watching, but I don't have any interest in the House of Dragons show. I didn't watch Game of Thrones. I'm not gonna watch this one. It's not anything personal. I just, it's just not, it's just not me. Um, and then Rings of Power, I do have interest in, but the conversations around it are so unfun online. Like, it's been such a not fun thing to watch discourse about. So I just like, I just don't even, I just don't want to do it. So anyway, that was kind of a long answer. The short answer is no, not really. Um, I, I don't want to make videos that I don't enjoy. So if something looks fun, absolutely I'll do it. If it doesn't look fun, I'll just watch the content. I don't have to, I don't have to talk about it too. But I will say that that definitely would be better for my channel. So if it's a matter of like you wanting your channel to grow, then doing those videos that everybody is interested in in the moment, it is important for, for channel growth because uh, that, I mean, that's how people are gonna find you if that's what they're interested in in the moment. I think for me, my channel has to be sustainable I have to, and the only way to make my channel sustainable is to make sure that I keep enjoying it. So making videos that I don't enjoy will mean that I'll crash and burn and not wanna make videos anymore. So, you know, you just gotta have that balance. Find videos that are clickable and fun and that people want to watch that are also fun for you. And I think overextending to the point of making content that you don't like because it's clickable like you will combust that way. Or at least I certainly would. Even this video, I could easily, there are some questions that I could pick out that I could like spill the tea or, you know, talk about something dramatic. Um, and I could, that could make me title this video better. That would make it more clickable. That would make people stay long enough to see the tea, all that kind of stuff. I could do that, but I just don't like, that would not be fun to me. So I don't, and I just, I just gotta, I gotta continue to love making videos in order to keep making videos. An American Soul says, do you find a written script or just a pile of notes more helpful when you film a video? And how do you avoid rambling? I always find myself getting caught up about things that I hadn't previously thought of and I end up rambling. Oh, I feel you there. I'm definitely more of a conversational, let's just chat and hang out kind of person. Um, but I guess I'm kind of trying to find the balance on that still and I don't really know what's gonna be best for me. I've always been a just sit down and record, have an idea of what I wanna talk about and just chat. That's always been what I do. Lately, I've been trying to script more, especially if I'm doing like a dedicated review or if it's a topic of conversation that I had to do research on or that I have a there's something that I want to communicate, I do a lot more scripting. I do a lot more pre-filming prep, which I think is making my videos stronger and I'm glad to do that, but I also still do a lot of just sit down and chat. Like this video I didn't plan for at all other than just scrolling some of the comments to just get an idea of what kind of stuff y'all wanted to talk about. But I guess I kind of do a combination of both depending on what it feels like would be best for the video. And uh, I definitely prefer a more sit down, chit chat, let's hang out and talk. That's more my vibe, but that's not really the vibe of YouTube right now. YouTube is quick cuts and engaging um, elements and stuff like that. So I'm trying to adapt so that I have more of that while still just being, just hanging out and chatting because that is my vibe. Have you ever felt pressure to cover certain stories that ended up having a negative impact on the experience? Also in the same vein, how do you deal with having passion and work cross paths with your channel? The first question, I'm not sure I fully understand exactly what you're asking. I think you mean, have I ever talked about a series because it's popular or because I feel pressure to do it, but then it ended up being a negative thing that I read it for that reason, maybe? I'll answer this the best the best way I can. As far as picking up series just because I feel pressure to, that, I don't think I do that. I mostly just pick up series that I'm interested in 
There are series that I'll pick up because a lot of my subscribers are are recommending it to me and genuinely think that I would enjoy it based off of my reading taste. And so I'll pick up something based off of that kind of recommendation. But even then, I don't read series that I don't think are right for me. A great example of that is Berserk, which is a series that tons of people want me to read. I get comments on it constantly, and I know it would be good for my channel to read that series because it's one of the most popular manga series out there. And I, business-wise, I should be reading it, right? Like channel algorithm-wise, I should be reading it. But I just know that the the subject matter is too heavy, certain things that I really don't like to read, I know are a big focus in that series. I just know that it's too much for me and it wouldn't be a positive experience for me personally to read it. So I'm just not gonna read it. Now, on the flip side, there are series that I've picked up because they're really popular, because tons of people love them and I wanna love them too. I didn't end up loving them on the level that I should have, on the level that people wanted me to, and I've had very negative experience with fandoms. And then it's like, well, then I just don't want, I don't even wanna keep giving the series a try because the discourse isn't fun. And so I just, I quit. And that's a big factor for me is I'm here because I wanna have conversations. I'm here because I wanna to relate to other readers. And I've had really positive experiences with fandoms that are really passionate and really excited. And I've had really negative experiences with fandoms. And I will just stop talking about a series. Even if I love the series, I'll stop talking about it here. I'll read it on my own if the discourse isn't fun because it's not worth it to me. <laughs> Like, I'm here for the conversations. If the conversations aren't fun to have, I'm out. And I think a big part of it is because I do, I do deal with anxiety and being online can be a really anxiety inducing thing. So I just don't, I just don't wanna mess with stuff that's gonna make my personal life, that's gonna make my head spiral. As far as how do I deal with having passion and work cross paths with my channel, for me, it works out great. A lot of people, it doesn't. So I guess it just depends from person to person. I feel extremely grateful to be able to do something for a living, to provide for my family by doing something that I absolutely love. I love to read, that's never gonna change. I love talking about stories, that's never gonna change. I love it being more of a community activity instead of a solo activity, that's never gonna change. I'm always excited to talk to another reader. So for me, being able to sit down and chat about a story is awesome. And being able to do that as my job is awesome. And I guess I just make choices that aren't always the most algorithm friendly, that aren't always the best for growth. I make those choices to keep this sustainable, to keep me loving it. I think one really good example of, of something that I've done in order to make it so that it doesn't feel like work and so that I can still just love what I'm doing is making that second channel. I have a second channel that I've created this year where it was originally just a vlog channel. I just did reading vlogs there and now I've started doing book reviews there and doing videos that perform poorly for me. Um, reading vlogs are some of my lower performing videos, but I love doing them. Book reviews are some of my lowest performing videos, but I love doing them. And so I was consistently having videos on my channel that would perform well and videos on my channel that would perform really, really low. And for the algorithm, for you know, a, the way YouTube is built, that does, like that's bad on your, that's hard on your channel. So being able to, instead of just saying, okay, I won't do these videos that are harming my channel, I love my channel, I love what I do, I wanna keep doing it, so I do have to look at that kind of stuff. And instead of just saying, okay, I can't do these videos anymore, I just, made a space to be able to do them. And it doesn't matter to me how those videos perform. It doesn't matter to me if a video that I did over there just completely bombs because I'm making the content that I love the most and I have a space to do it without worrying about how it's gonna perform. So I think just finding ways to make it so that I can still make my favorite content, whether it performs well or whether it performs poorly, I still get to make whatever I wanna make. And then I just decide where it goes has been a great way for me to still, this is still a hobby. I just, it's also work. It gets to be both. Does that make sense? 
that's a big way that's helped me to not feel like this is a chore, but to still just be a creative outlet and to still just, I make I make the videos I wanna make. And then I just choose in what, which place it goes depending on what the interest level for everybody else is for what I enjoy making. Does that make sense? Casey Miller asked, what is your day-to-day -day life like with balancing making videos, editing, reading, raising kids, and maintaining the home, etc.? It's remarkable how much it seems you get done throughout the week. P.S. I also love that you and your husband collaborate on the production editing process. Such a neat way to spend your time and build something together. Yeah, so for those that don't know, Corey is my video editor. My husband edits all my videos, um, which has been such a load off for me since he started doing that. What's my day-to-day -day life like? Um, my kiddos go to school. I have two kids, if you don't know. My kiddos go to school, and while they're at school, I'm either planning videos, figuring out what I'm gonna re what I'm gonna do next, and prepping for them, getting my ideas straight, or I'm filming those videos. And Corey edits them, and then I watch them back and do little tweaks, and then we upload, and I make my thumbnails. So, um, what's day to day life look like while the kids are at school? I'm working. When the kids come home, we're going on adventures, we're going on hikes, we're playing, we're you know, it's family time. So I think just kind of, kind of just like a normal, a normal thing. I work while my kids are at school. I mom while my kids are at home. Summers are a lot harder to balance things, but during the school year, it's awesome. It's definitely a lot more, YouTube is a lot more work than I ever thought it was. Before I started making YouTube videos, I had no idea how much time and work goes into making a video. So it can be stressful to, sometimes because I upload so much. So it, it can feel like, man, I just need more work time. But then I just, a lot of times we'll just skip a video, just not upload one day that week and, and try, try to find the balance. A lot of it is just up to the fact that Corey and I both work on my channel makes it a lot easier because that means that we're both working from home, we're both doing the same thing. So if I need extra hours to work, he can go take the kids to the park. If he needs extra hours to do editing, then he I can take the kids hiking or whatever. And we just kind of work together to make it work. 12 Neef asked, I love behind the curtain content. Roughly how long does it take you to shoot and edit a video? It depends on the video. Some videos are super chill. This one, super chill. I'm just sitting down and hanging out and chatting. Editing it shouldn't be too much of a bother for Corey. We should be able to just maybe put I don't know, what do you think, Corey? Like four or five hours into this one? But then I have more complicated, more, I gotta do more prep work. He has to do a lot more editing videos that have a lot more visual elements that will take like 10 or more hours to get to do. Some videos are very time intensive and some are more chill. And what I try to do when I'm planning videos is I try to make sure to only have one really labor intensive video a week and then balance that out with more chill videos so that it isn't, it doesn't get overwhelming. Amu asked, does reading ever feel like a chore to you when expected to finish reviews on time? Also, is it overwhelming having to think of videos to make all the time? You must be so busy being a YouTuber and a parent. <laughs> Your second question, is it overwhelming to think of videos to make all the time? Yeah, man, sometimes it's really hard. <laughs> sometimes I have like this burst of inspiration and I have tons of video ideas all at once and I'm writing them all down and I'm so excited. And sometimes I just don't have that many ideas and I'm not really sure what to upload. It's like, I, sometimes I don't know what to do. And and that can be, that can be stressful because like, I love making videos. I want to make videos. This is my job. So that's one way that I guess it can kind of feel overwhelming sometimes when you put so much creative labor into something, when you really pour yourself into something, it feels like a piece of you. So yeah, it can get, it can get overwhelming sometimes for sure. And I'm constantly trying to push myself and think of like, what's something creative and different that you can do so that your channel doesn't just do the same things over and over again. So it doesn't feel stagnant. What's something different that's still about literature and constantly trying to push myself to kind of push those boundaries while still being about literature because that's what I always want to talk about. Yeah, it can definitely feel like a lot sometimes it being in the planning process of things. And does reading ever feel like a chore? No. 
I cannot emphasize enough to you how much reading is healing and restorative to me. Reading is my favorite thing to do. It's the thing that relaxes me more than anything else. It's the thing that calms me down when I've had a stressful day or when I'm feeling overwhelmed. Reading is, it's my reset button. It's, it's, reading is never a chore to me. Even when I'm in a reading slump, it's just, it's usually just because I keep starting books and not really finishing anything. So I have too many books open at once, but just not wanting to read at all that's really rare for me. Constantina says, how do negative comments make you feel? From what I've seen, your subscribers are a loving and supporting community, but was just wondering if negative comments ever bring you down and how do you deal with them? Yup, they sure do. <laughs> I would say that the majority of videos, videos that perform well, not like low, perf low performing videos are typically people that just watch all my videos that are there no matter what and are always supportive and encouraging, but videos that do really well, that bring in a lot of different people. I would say it's like 98% people are there to chat and discuss and and have a good time. And even if they disagree with me, you know, they they do it in a way that's engaging and, and is a discussion. And then there's about 2% that are, that are just like there to rage or not there to rage. They came to have a good time, but ended up raging. And how do those comments make me feel? <laughs> bad. It's even though it's such a small percentage, it does. It, it gets to me. It's hard. Um, it My anxiety spirals and I got to go for a walk. I mean, just being like really tra transparent with you, it is hard. It, people aren't built to have just constant feedback and being online, that's what you get. You get constant feedback. People constantly giving opinions and sometimes it's a lot of times it's respectful and it's a discussion and I disagree with you and here are my points or I agree with you and here's what I think and sometimes it's not sometimes it's like just very targeted and that sucks how do I deal with it I go for a walk I go for a walk and I remind myself this doesn't actually matter like you you misunderstood something in the story and you gave a bad take this affects the world in no way like great. I want to learn from it and I want to grow and I want to understand and I want to now go reread that scene and see what I missed the first time around. And it's great to, to learn, but at the same time, like when it's done, when it's delivered to you in a really angry way, it feels like it's higher stakes than it is. So going for a walk and breathing and remember the stakes aren't high. This is fiction helps me a lot. William Madison said, there's been a pretty big shift in the media you cover over the past few years, manga and anime. The content appears to be doing really well, but I remember in an older, in older, in an older video, you mentioned novels to be your primary passion and you weren't particularly interested in covering those mediums. Do you feel like you've been forced into reviewing more manga because it does well on your channel? Do you actually enjoy One Piece and Hunter x Hunter as much as books like Lies of Loch Lamora and Midnight Library? Generally, your review titles with large fan bases are overwhelmingly positive. Do you ever feel like you have to give manga series in particular positive reviews to retain high viewership? Maybe the succinct question is, how much has your YouTube passion project turned into a job where you need to make reviews slash content to keep fans happy? Love all your videos regardless. Keep up the great work. Okay, so the, the first question, the initial thing, is about um, I use I I made a video previously saying that I wasn't as interested in manga. I re <sighs> so I remember I don't remember saying that particularly, but I think I know what you're talking about because I I was actively trying to get into manga for about a year before I got into it because so many of my subscribers kept commenting saying I really think that you'll like this medium if you'll give it a shot. There's some amazing manga stories too. It I think it'll suit you. I love manga. I want you to love manga. You know all that. Um, just like people sharing their passion with me and and really thinking that I could like it. So for about a year, I was actively trying to get into manga. I was reading series like Full Metal Alchemist, Death Note, Twentieth Century Boys, and I think I might have tried one or two other series. But every single month, I was trying to read at least one volume of a manga. If I could read more, that'd be great. I was still primarily focused on novels, but. I do this with a lot of genres. I typically will try to give something as much of a chance as I can. Um, I remember I did the same thing with mystery novels. I read so many mystery novels just trying to find my niche in the mystery genre, trying to love it because I have this mentality in my head 
that I can love any genre or any medium or any something if it's literature, because I love literature. And there were, I, it's been a learning experience. There were some mediums like mysteries where I realized, you know what? I just don't like this. It's just not gonna be my thing. I'm not gonna fall in love with this genre. And like, that's, that's just gonna have to be okay with me. <laughs> and then there were other things like manga that I didn't initially click with. I didn't initially find the right, the right series to get me into it, but eventually I found something that I loved that made me click and that got me into it. And One Piece was of course the series that, man, I just fell in love with. So I do remember during that time where I was giving manga a chance and like really trying to see if it was something that I could love, trying a lot of different series. Um, I, I remember saying like, I don't know if manga's for me and all that kind of stuff. So that's probably what you're referring to. And I've done that with a lot of mediums, genres, that sort of stuff. And sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't. It worked out for this one. As far as um, reviews of titles with large fan bases are overwhelmingly positive. Man, I don't know about that. Fruits Basket which I happen to have right here. I read the first three of these collector's editions and I loved them and I made a video about them. And then after those first three, it really dropped off for me and I stopped enjoying the series. And I continued to talk about it on my reading vlogs and I ended up DNFing the series because I was just like, this is just, this isn't it for me. This is not the series for me. And I continued to talk about it on reading vlogs until I gave up on it, but I didn't make any more videos on it. Um, Mermaid Saga, I talked about in a reading vlog, but I never made a dedicated video for. I'm currently reading The Demon King's Daughter, and I know I'm not gonna make a, uh, a video for that because I'm enjoying it, but I'm not loving it. So typically my formula is the same with manga as it is with books, that I love making videos about things that I love, things that I connect with, things that I feel like I could dig deep into and really have a discussion on, and if the, something deserves, not deserves. If there's something that I feel like I have a rant about, I might make a video about that too. Um, but books that kind of just like fall in the middle for me that I just, I don't, it, I don't connect with it or I like it, but I don't love it. Those videos, those books typically are just talked about in a reading vlog, but they don't get a dedicated video. So manga and books are kind of the same in that way. The only difference is that um, a lot of my book reviews are on the second channel because book reviews, unless it's a really popular series, typically don't, uh, people don't click on that video. So they go on my passion project channel, my second channel. But I still make a lot of book reviews and a lot of manga reviews. And I just happen to, I don't dedicate, I don't do dedicated videos for books unless I'm passionate about them. Books that kind of, that I just like, but I don't love, those typically are reading vlog books. So that's probably why you see so many dedicated videos with really positive titles, because the ones that don't have really positive vibes for me are reading vlog discussions. But plus two, I'm new to manga, so I'm reading a lot of the most popular series first. So, you know, I'm reading like the ones that are tried and true and that I'm more likely to enjoy. Oh, and then you also asked, sorry, there's, <laughs> I wanna make sure I'm covering the whole of this comment. You also asked, do I actually enjoy One Piece and Hunter x Hunter as much as some of the books that I love? And yeah, of course. It, if I said I liked something that I didn't like, that would, first of all, it would feel really gross. But second of all, that wouldn't be fun. <laughs> and like, it's so important to me to, to enjoy making videos because there are other, there are other things that I could be doing other than being a YouTuber, that, that would interest me. And if I don't enjoy doing this anymore, I will bail so fast. <laughs> like, I, I do not feel an obligation to continue making YouTube videos if I don't enjoy them. So I gotta, I gotta make sure that I still enjoy it and talking about pretending to like things that I don't like would be so miserable. Do you have any other plans for your channel before you settled on what you do now? Beyond that, do you ever consider doing vastly different video, different content on your channel? Or would you ever start a second channel for those endeavors? I find talking to creators about content creation ideals is always an interesting discussion to me. Thank you for your encouragement, Sir Brainwaves. Um, I do, yes. I enjoy making videos. I enjoy this process. I think it's fun. I like doing it. And so basically anything that I'm interested in, I've considered 
creating a channel about it. I am not a gamer, but I do enjoy video games and I enjoy just like chit chat hanging out. So my friend Matt and I have talked about making a gaming channel many times and we've never done it, but um, that's something that we've talked about where we can just hang out and play video games and, and chat. And if people wanna watch, they can watch. If not, it's just something fun that we do together. We still might, but I've, the only reason we haven't is because I don't wanna buy the equipment because the software to be able to do all that, like it's, I just haven't, I haven't pulled the trigger yet. Um, I love travel. I love going on adventures. I love exploring and I don't even, like it doesn't even have to be, I don't have to travel far. Like I could literally just travel two to three hours away and go for a really great hike. And that rejuvenates me probably even more than reading or maybe on the same level as reading like hiking being out in nature it's where i come alive and so i have considered making a travel channel even if it just means i traveled two hours and went on an awesome hike here's a video about it i've considered doing that many many times because i just i thrive in nature and exploring new places in nature, finding new great hikes, like, oh, I live for it. I live for that. And I've considered making that channel. And I've even talked to our cousins who, well, Corey's cousins. I shouldn't say our cousins, that makes it sound bad. Corey's cousins who we travel with a lot. We've talked about making a travel channel together because we, we go hiking with them a lot and we love to go exploring and finding new places to hike <laughs> a lot. So we've talked about making a travel channel together. Um, I really, really wanna learn Spanish and I know that I would be more motivated to be consistent if I made a channel or made videos tracking my process of learning this language. Like basically anything I'm interested in, rock climbing. Oh, I've considered making rock climbing channel. Basically anything that I'm interested in, I've considered making a channel around because I just really, really enjoy making videos. But at the end of the day, I can only do so much. <laughs> and I already have two channels talking about books and manga. So like, I gotta cool it or I'll die. But I mean, I, who knows? Maybe I'll make another channel sometime. I think this video is long enough, so I'll do one more uh, question and we'll call it a day. Do you have an idea of how long you'll keep doing this for? I doubt you'll get tired of gushing over your favorites, but do you have any cutoffs for YouTube or Patreon? Sorry if this question is too personal. Totally not. Um, this is actually a great question to end this video on. Do I have any idea how long I'll do this for? None, I have no idea. Um, I know that I won't do it forever. I'll probably never stop reading and I'll probably never stop finding readers to talk to, but I mean, I'm not gonna lie to you. Being online can be really, really stressful. It can feed my anxiety so hard. And there are days where I read comments and I spiral and I like, being online can be stressful. So. I don't see myself doing this forever, but I'm definitely not done. You know, like I still, I love talking about stories. I love reading through comments, even though some of them aren't nice, the majority of them are. I love being a part of a community. Um, I love getting on my Discord and talking to my friends that I've made through this community. I, there's so much that I love about this that the good so heavily outweighs the bad that I don't see myself going anywhere anytime soon. But the moment I stop loving this, I like, I'm totally cool with going and finding something else to do. There are other jobs that appeal to me. There are other things that I could pursue that I think I would love. And um, being online is stressful and it can be overwhelming. So as soon as it's not fun for me anymore, I'm okay with moving on, you know? But right now, like my passion is here and I don't see that changing anytime soon. So there you go. There's a little bit of the behind the curtain kind of stuff if y'all are interested. I hope you enjoyed this little discussion. If you want to continue chatting about it in the comments, please feel free to. Um, I would love to read through more stuff that you want to chat about. I post videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on the second channel. I post videos on Tuesdays and Thursdays, which is always linked in the description of my videos. I'll see you again soon. Bye.